Today I will go over the altcoins that have the highest chance of 10xing or even 100xing your money in this bull cycle. And no, it won't be the same projects that pumped in the last cycle. We will discuss also why this might be the last chance in the last bull run where we see altcoins pumping 10x, 20x, even up to 100 or even 1000x. We will discuss what a bull cycle like this exactly looks like. What are the different phases? When should we enter and when especially should we exit? Did the altcoin season already start? Are we too late? Or can we still enter and make some profits with altcoins? The most important rule for this video here to understand is for altcoins to do well, we need Bitcoin to do well. For Bitcoin to do well, we need the American economy or the S&P 500 to do well. And for this to happen, that the S&P does well, is we need very controlled interest rates. Anyways, this bull cycle here is very, very different to any other bull cycle we have experienced in the past. So why is that, Nick? Because we have the Black Rocks, the biggest institutions of our world, coming in and selling Bitcoin as a financial asset, as a financial instrument to their millions and millions of customers. We can and we will go later into the graph and discuss the price action of Bitcoin that we see at the moment. But one important market rule shows a very powerful reality for Bitcoin to reach new highs that we have never seen before. And the rule is called supply and demand. Bitcoin is an extremely scarce asset. It's a non-negotiable. We cannot just call the printer press and say, hey, John, print us another $14 trillion. We need it, right? There is demand out there. No, it's set to 1 million Bitcoins. There is no more. We cannot negotiate. There's nobody to call and say, hey, just print, doesn't matter. Inflation doesn't matter. Just print more. It doesn't exist in Bitcoin. At the same time, we have the most powerful company, biggest corporation in the world, right? BlackRock pretty much owns the world and we just live in their world. Come in and say, hey, I'm interested in Bitcoin. I'm selling this as my financial asset to my customers. And we're pumping up this price because we're marketing and selling it to our customers. And what does the law of supply and demand state? If we only have 300 Patek Philippe watches, or let's take this Rolex watch, there are only 300 of this in the world. But on the other side, we have 30,000 people who are saying, no matter what, I want this watch, no matter how much it is. So we have the supply, only 300. We have demand, 30,000. And all of them are saying, I want this watch. What is going to happen on the aftermarket out there? The price obviously goes up because these people are saying, I want, I want this watch. But there's only very limited supply. So the price will go up and up and up until the market says, hey, no, I'm not going to pay $500,000 for this watch. Enough is enough. So then we have a market price. And the exact same thing is happening to Bitcoin right now. In this bull cycle, new investors who have not even thought about Bitcoin or crypto in the last bull cycle are getting exposed to the world of Bitcoin. BlackRock and Wall Street are selling their Bitcoin ETFs over and over and over again, right? Bringing so many billions of dollars into the market. And other giant asset managers from all over the world are joining the party, right? They saw, okay, this works so well. Let me also join the party. I also want to have a piece of the pie. And they just keep on bringing in massive amounts of capital into crypto. And as if this wouldn't be enough, that giant corporations like BlackRock and the entire Wall Street, also now Singaporean asset managers, Japanese asset managers coming in and pumping the demand of Bitcoin into highs we have never seen before. The supply in 39 days is even getting cut in half. The halving event. So let's analyze real fast what is usually happening after the halving event. What's happening to the Bitcoin price? And we can see here this little box, right? This is always roughly where the halving event is happening, okay? We see the bear market always looks pretty much identical over here, right? This is the bull cycle over here. Bear market looks like this, okay? Then we go over into the most boring phase, the accumulation phase, okay? Nothing is really happening. We can day trade a little bit, take some profits over there. We have made some great profits day trading also, but nothing insane. And it's kind of boring. People are always like, ah, it's not gonna come back. And then it always looks pretty much same when we go from this phase here, the boring phase into the bull phase, okay? And this is here roughly when the halving event is always happening, where you, where you can see the white box. And then the bull cycle is happening where things go crazy. Media is going crazy. People are feeling FOMO. Things are going nuclear. Obviously, we have small setbacks along the way, as you can see here, right? That's why we don't want to be always um, completely over leveraged. But this is how it usually looks like. And as we can see here, if we analyze, then we see that after the halving event is the time where things are getting really out of hand, I would call it, right? When things are really getting accelerated and we go all the way up. But one thing is very different this time. 
This time we reached the all-time high already pre-halving. This has never happened before. This time we are rallying with the price into the halving event. And this time we reached the all-time high already one month prior to the halving event. Guys, this means that this bull cycle is accelerated for sure. And this most probably also means that this bull cycle is a much more powerful and much more giant bull cycle than we have ever seen before. One thing that I really like to look at is this Bitcoin rainbow chart here, okay? It's not the most accurate, but it gives us a great macro view on things, where we are in the cycle, where we should sell, right? Where we do not want to buy in, where most of the people are buying in at the maximum bubble territory up here, right? And it shows us always where we usually are in the cycle when it comes to a halving event, right? Like in the last chart, we see halving event, a couple months later, boom, we see price rising to the all-time high. Same over here again. And here we are already kind of high. If we go back in time, we can see perfectly that usually six months after the halving event, okay, we see the price rallying up to a new all-time high. Same over here, six months into it, boom, we go and rally all the way up to an all-time high. According to this chart, we're still very far away from the red zone where we do not want to enter, but we want to sell. This underlines my analyst argument that we will see prices in this cycle that nobody could have predicted and even thought of six months ago. Now, why could this be the last bull cycle where we see prices, altcoin prices, rally up 10x, 100x, even 1,000x? Hell, even two or 5,000x in some coins. After big institutions like BlackRock are joining the party, getting involved in Bitcoin, Bitcoin and crypto is no longer small and unprofessional. We will see regulations tightening up. And of course, none of us, keep this in mind, has a magic mirror where we can look into the wall, into the mirror and say, hey, regulations will kick in in March next year. Then we'll never see gains like this again, right? Nobody can predict stuff like this. But one thing I can tell you is that in the last two bull cycles already, we saw people getting loud, talking about how this is the last bull cycle. It will never happen again. So it's the same thing again, right? It's always a different topic. They're talking about regulations already since the last two bull cycles, right? And every time it makes sense, okay? But again, two years after the bull cycle, we see another one starting. But let's not talk about the next bull cycle. Let's just focus on how we can multiply our money in this bull cycle. So now as we understood how different things are connected, how Bitcoin and the altcoin prices are connected, where we are in this bull cycle here right now, let's talk about how we can make life-changing money in crypto, aka 10xing or 20xing our investments. While you have a good chance with Bitcoin to 2x or 3x your money, of course, if you're leverage trading like we are doing, then your potential upside is way higher. But on the other side, we have small market cap altcoins Right, that they are very small right now in the market, that they have a very good potential and a pretty good risk-reward ratio or to go buy these coins and see potentially a 10x, 100x, 1000x. Right? We've seen that in the past. We've made a lot of money with them in the past. So why should it not be possible this time? Keep in mind, with Bitcoin or Ethereum, you will not be 10 or 20xing your money short term. So while we know that Bitcoin is most probably building a huge bubble through the capital that's flowing in from Wall Street, from the hype that is building up, right? Through the halving event, we see Bitcoin, we've learned Bitcoin is riding the wave up, okay? And we jump on this wave, but we don't want to 2x our money with Bitcoin. But we also want to invest into smaller market cap altcoins that have the chance and the potential to 1000x and then 10x, 100x, 1000x our investments. For this, we have to focus mainly on market capitalization. In order to find promising projects, what I'm mostly looking at is the market cap. To explain market cap for you, it's the price per coin multiplied with the circulating number of coins. So for us to make a 10x on our Bitcoin investment, the market cap would need to climb to $14 trillion. And just to show you what kind of massive number this is, if we compare the seven biggest companies in the world, they are at a $14 trillion valuation. All these big ass corporations here, Meta, Google, Amazon, Saudi Aramco, N Nvidia, Apple, Microsoft. And while the power of Bitcoin is huge, right? I think we can all agree to that. These seven companies here pretty much own the entire world and they're not even worth 14 trillion. And to put this into perspective one more time, how hard it is to achieve that market cap is. The highest ever recorded market cap was $3 trillion of the entire cryptocurrency market, not only Bitcoin, but the entire crypto market. 
But hey, we see the market cap of gold at 14 trillion. And if Michael Saylor and Mark Cuban is right, and Bitcoin is the new digital and way better gold, then we could see that playing out in a long run, in a pretty long run, right? Not short term, not midterm. And they make some pretty good points. Michael Saylor says, if you could send $100 million worth of your gold across different countries for a couple of dollars in fees without having to fear to being taxed or ripped off by some mafias, by some gangsters, right? You only pay a couple of dollars. You can't be taxed. It's completely safe. And it arrives within a couple of minutes. Then people would love that. And here we can see perfectly that we still have more than 30% to go until we reach the all-time high of the altcoin market. And as we remember, altcoins follow Bitcoin. And with Bitcoin being so early and so dominant right now, reaching an all-time high pre-halving, we most probably see much higher highs than we have seen before in altcoins. So there's still enough potential to make some really, really good gains in altcoins. But before we go and talk about how to make some really good gains in life-changing money in crypto, we first have to discuss how not to lose a lot of money in crypto. Because if we're honest, the majority of the people in the financial markets and especially in crypto, they're not making money, they're losing money. The worst person you could be is joining the party when the party is over, when everything is at a all time high and you're the exit liquidity for people like me. Keep one thing in mind and the FOMO will try to prove you different, especially when things go crazy. All the projects, let's say 98% of all projects that are shooting up 100x, 1000x, everybody thinks, whoa, this is the new dollar, this is the new Bitcoin they will be crashing down and people will be losing 90%, 98% of their money and a ton of money. The majority of people will lose their money in crypto. So stay with me here in this video because at the end of the video, I will exactly explain when is the time to exit so you're not part of the crypto losers. One great index to measure this is when you suddenly see everyone talking about how they potentially sell their house because Bitcoin is just going to 5 million per coin and we want to sell our house, our car, and put everything into crypto, put everything into, into Bitcoin because everything will just keep on going up. That's what people actually think. And the FOMO is so high that they're like, ah, oh, it will go up forever. Suddenly you see TV hosts buying Bitcoin on TV. Okay, big NFL stars, big whatever stars are on stream buying Bitcoin, talking about Ethereum, talking about how powerful the entire crypto market is. Every market, but especially crypto, works in cycles. We can see that here. In an ideal world, we would go in at the very bottom, wait until we're rising all the way up, and then obviously get out here. Especially in altcoins, I only make bets that I can afford to lose. I would never pour any money into altcoins that if I lose it, it would hurt me. My thought process looks like this. If I put six figures into altcoins as a bet, and I lose that entire money, would it break my neck? No, I just make back the money, no problem. But on the other side, if I potentially 10 or 20x that money, is that bet worth it? Yeah, for sure. So let's do the bet. In investing, we pretty much always have the higher the potential growth, the higher the potential risk. To understand altcoins and to invest into the right projects, we need to understand the narrative and the hype of this cycle. In this cycle, the narrative is clearly AI, and we can see that manifesting in the real world, right? In the tech world. We see here NVIDIA completely outperforming Amazon. Especially here in the last year, you can see how it goes just nuclear. So AI pretty much creates hype and FOMO by itself. If Nvidia keeps going up and performing on this level, we will see AI coins just following Nvidia. But in these AI coins, we have a much higher potential. One AI project we placed a pretty sweet bet on is Bitensor. I think decentralized blockchain technology will play a crucial role in AI. In my opinion, Bitensor fills in an important gap in the entire AI industry, okay? It does what OpenAI and the rest of the AI giants are failing to do. Bittensor does not follow the woke narrative where they will joke about President Trump in a very bad way, but they would not dare to make a joke about Grandpa Biden. So they're all about fairness. They don't follow the narrative. They don't follow the woke agenda. And I like that. We can see it here. Bittensor, the world's first neutral internet. So BitInsor is pretty much the player that gives us exposure to any sector of AI and crypto. There is an argument to be made that BitInsor is the index that gives us exposure to all AI X crypto projects. So BitInsor is like ChatGPT, but in a Bitcoin mechanism. Go and watch some videos on them. I'm not going to go now on a 10 minute rant where I go exactly into all tech details and explaining you why this is 
the most phenomenal and revolutionizing technology. But one thing that I want to state is that it makes extreme sense. I see how it fills in a gap and it plays perfectly into the narrative. Their technology pretty much helps any AI company to grow exponentially in a decentralized, and that's very important, in a decentralized way because this is what the other AI giants do not have. It's being called the Bitcoin of machine learning. Now, why do I see this project still being undervalued and still having a good opportunity, although we have already seen a 10x price increase? One important metric to always figure out to see if the full potential of a project is already reached is we figure out on what kind of exchanges we're already listed. We see some big players here already, like Gate.io, KuCoin, Maxi, we see BitGet, but we're missing Binance, Crypto.com, we're missing Coinbase, and, and once we're getting listed on these three big players, then massive amounts of capital of other investors are getting access to invest into this project. Now let's compare the search volume on Google to other projects that have been pumping, like Shiba, for example, okay? And we can see that outside of the crypto bubble and people who really understand the project have not been investing and not been searching at all about Bitensor. But we can find Bitensor already on CoinMarketCap in the top 30 nearly, okay? But top 40 of all cryptocurrencies when it comes to market cap. Now, this means that this 10x price increase and the market cap that brings us into top 30 is been created by people who only truly understand what the tech behind this project is and who are inside of the crypto X AI bubble. While the dumb money will join the party and feel the entire FOMO of crypto X AI in stage three and especially in stage four of this crypto bull run. Here we can see the entire circulation of all units out there, 6.7 million, and we can see that 83.7% of the entire circulation is being staked. This is a great sign that the majority of all holders are not trying to get in, flip it and make some quick buck, but they're actually investing into the project for seeing the long-term vision and, and using the project for what it's been created for. I'm very bullish on this and I think that the AI narrative is just creating FOMO by itself and especially in stage four, projects like this are just going nuclear. But I have to say that their market cap at over $4 billion is kind of high already for crypto. But if we compare it to AI tech, it's very low. So we have some potential to go here and double or triple. Next one on the list is Caspar. Caspar is one of our biggest bets in altcoins. Maybe a little too big, but I'm very bullish on Caspar. We have one trade currently running in a $55,000 profit. And we have another $40,000 in spot purchases. There's already a strong hype within the crypto community when it comes to Caspa. Caspa has been performing pretty well, even in the bear market, as we can see. And then we have seen Caspa setting new all-time highs pretty much every three months. And then we have seen a 3x within 30 days. In the past couple of weeks, we have seen a pullback here from the top going down, but it pretty much fits the behavior of Bitcoin right now, so nothing to worry about. The main reason why Caspa grew so much and has even much higher potential, in my opinion, is the tech the underlying tech behind the coin. Caspa is super fast. It takes one second to build a new block, while compared to Bitcoin, it takes 10 minutes. And it's very cheap to transact on. Caspa is there to act as a cash alternative. And the cool thing, it's capped, right? You cannot inflate it like the US dollar. The market cap is already at $3 billion, but I can see it going to five or 10X for sure. And Caspa is yet to be listed on the most relevant exchanges that will again bring a lot of exposure and a lot of capital into the project. Right now, Caspa is on place 41 of all cryptocurrencies when it comes to a market cap. And if we're getting listed on the three biggest exchanges, get that capital run into Caspa, then we, see, we most probably see Caspa going all the way up to place 20. So let's see if Caspa's team manages to do what they're planning to do. But one thing that we can already see, we have a lot of influencers, a lot of people in the crypto bubble who are big time Caspa investors and big time Caspa fans. And me and my team, we can definitely see the price of Caspa go to three to five dollars, which would mean that we're 20 xing from here. And we're 20 xing our position, which would be a very sweet profit for just one of our coins in our portfolio. Let's go back to AI. I think AI is still massively undervalued. It definitely has the strongest hype and the strongest narrative in tech right now. And the same will also happen here in crypto. And on top, valuations in AI are much, much higher than in any other sector. Usually, 
AI companies don't bumble around at a $100 million market cap. It's most of the time in the multiple billions. And market caps in AI get completely out of control. I mean, everybody knows this. As soon as there's AI in your company name, people are just throwing money at it. So AI and crypto is definitely something we cannot ignore if we want to 10x or 100x our portfolio. But keep one thing in mind. Bitcoin is the boss. For altcoins and these AI coins to really pump up, Bitcoin has to pump up. Everything is following Bitcoin. And we have seen altcoins and AI coins move a little bit, but nothing compared to the extent what we're about to see once Bitcoin really goes nuclear. One thing that we've always seen is if the main projects here, the top 10 of this category, goes all the way up and they take off, then we have all these smaller projects down here, follow them. But what I want to see before I invest, I want to see some real life use case in these projects because what happens if there is only hype and only narrative and zero use case, we will only have people who are just jumping in to get a fast profit and they're just dumping the project as soon as they see some small profits. Anyways, if you want to go and have exposure in AI and you want to be kind of safe, then I would go with a mix of the top 10 projects here because if you're sure that Bitcoin takes off, these projects will follow and you're pretty safe to get a couple of nice multiples in these top 10 here. But what I'm looking at, because I want to play some bets where I can win big, I'm looking at projects that have a market cap of less than a billion dollars. Our thought process here is that these top projects like Near Protocol, Internet Computer, Render Token, right, The Graph, which I'm, by the way, holding since last bull run, that they're shooting up to a market cap of 20, 25 billion and smaller projects down here, like AOS Network, Ocean Protocol, and a couple of more here, they're following all the way up and take their place, right? With a market cap of $8 billion, $6 billion, $4 billion. And that means we have a very nice multiple. But one thing that we're doing here is we're not hopping in into these projects for a nice little profit, right? I want to see these projects go completely nuclear because I want to have some nice multiple on my six-figure investment. First, we look for smaller market caps, and then I want to understand if normal people understand the use case behind the project. Deepin is a narrative that in this cycle most probably takes the place of NFTs of the last cycle and is about to explode. We've seen some very nice gains in Deepin already. And if I see in this list here right now, a project that combines Deepin and AI and has a market cap of a couple hundred million dollars, I want to understand the use case. And if I understand it and I can see that normal people understand the use case, then I most probably place my bet. A tour is one of these. We've seen a spike here already. We have a position that we opened roughly here, right? So we more than doubled. That is good. But if I see it dumping a little bit, I will directly increase my position because we've seen here some massive gains already and I see nice potential. Palm AI here, for example, is a project with a real life use case. I see good potential in this project. Send it over to the father of one of my buddies. Their software company makes um, $60 million per year. And this guy's father really liked it. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind, the major skill in this bull cycle is to understand where the hype is at, to understand where the narrative is at. Because what we're doing is we're placing our bet on a horse where we believe that the audience will like this horse the most. So if narrative and hype is the biggest needle mover in this market here right now, then we should check the projects that already have the highest market cap, that have the nicest gains, right? and seeing what kind of field they're operating, what is the narrative that they're following. Then we find projects with a similar narrative, with a similar hype, but with a much smaller market cap, so we have higher potential gains. LimeWire is one project with a great narrative. Blockchain, AI, and content creation. I mean, this screams like hype. And these keywords scream for a high valuation. We have a very small market cap of only $52 million, but the difference is very high to the fully diluted market cap. It's more than 10x meaning a whole bunch of the total supply of coins is not yet in the market. This means that VCs are still holding coins and as soon as they're dumping it into the market and trying to sell, this could really bring down the price. So here again, it's not the most important thing if the platform really takes YouTube out of business, which I do not see happening for sure. But what we want to do is we want to see a strong narrative, strong hype, so we can ride the wave all the way up and then dump our coins once we're at the top. One project I can see going 10x from here is PAL AI. It fits the winning narrative. AI is the winning narrative. We understood that right now. It combines crypto and AI bots. AI bots are such a massive market. It fits the hype perfectly. They focus on crypto trading, online business, coachings, digital products, right? Influencers. 
And these topics by itself are already hype. We checked the market cap here. It's not super low, but we can definitely see this going all the way up and maybe five or 10 X from here. Node AI is one of our positions in AI. Very small market cap, just a hundred million dollars. And it's very close to the fully diluted market cap. This means that all of their supply is pretty much already out there in the market. So we have a nice position in here and thinking about it right now, I'm most probably gonna buy a couple of more. Yeah, I'm gonna buy some more today. Especially if we compare Node AI with Render, it has a very, very similar narrative. And the cool thing is, if we see now here market cap, 4 billion already, right? We see our 100 million over here. This is a very promising bet to take. There's definitely a 20x, maybe 40x potential. But again, keep in mind, it's a gamble. Don't put your life savings in here. But if you want to, then right now is probably a good time to place a bet because we saw that little dip here right now and we're getting in for a discount. Layer AI could be a very, very good bet. We have a micro, micro, micro market cap over here. Again, the smaller the market cap, the riskier the bet, but also the higher the potential. Guys, keep in mind, this is risky, okay? This is, I would even call this degenerate to put money in here, okay? But... I like to gamble a little bit of money to have a huge upside. The narrative is good and we have insane trading volume compared to the market cap if you check this out here. This is a full venture capital investment. I'm only pouring money into this into these kind of projects that I can that I'm fully prepared to lose. And I'm placing these more gamblish bets not on one horse, right? What I'm doing, I'm taking my very risk 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 capital that I'm deploying, right? And I'm betting on 10 different of these little projects that have great upside potential, that have a good narrative, right? So I can afford to pick 10 losers. If I have three winners, one of them goes crazy, then I have made a lot of money in this market. Condox is another one of these bets I took. Market cap is <laughs> super micro, right? So we have great upside potential. But again, understand the psychology behind this, right? I'm spreading. That's how venture capitalists make their bets, right? They're spreading their investment. So only one has to go really good. Rest can lose money. Not a big deal. We have multiplied our money. Why did I choose this project here? It fits the narrative of NVIDIA. It's in the gaming narrative. And it fits the narrative with NFTs. And it has a strong and very deep connection to NVIDIA, okay? So this is a bet that I'm taking. I'm not telling you to do this, right? This is super risky, especially the last ones that I, that I showed. But again, you want to take some capital and push it into these AI coins that you're willing to lose. And if only one does a thousand X, it should multiply your money already. Anyways, guys, this is it for the video. I'll keep you updated how my positions are going and I'll see you in the next video. Hit the like button if you liked it and click the subscribe button. All the best for your investments and I'll see you in the next one.